These are horrible hacks. This whole code should be removed. It's not something you expect to find in your Palo Alto firewall, but here we are. And we're going to talk about today CVE 2024-0112. Hopefully you have patched your system. If uh, not, stop watching this video and go patch. And please tell me you didn't have the management interface exposed like the 11,000 people that did when this first came out. But that's what we're going to break down today is the Palo Alto vulnerability that could have been prevented in my opinion. But watch this video to the end and then you let me know when you decide. So let's get started. <music> Are you an individual or forward-thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structure cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that will get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Now I'm going to be pulling all of this data from this write-up from Watchtower Labs. You'll find the entire link down below so you can read through all of it. So I'm just going to jump to a couple of the highlights on here. There are two different CVEs. We're going to focus a little bit more on the bigger deal here, which is CVE 2024-0012, which is a management interface bypass. Now, normally a management interface bypass would not be the end of the world because people should be here in 2024 not exposing management faces to the internet. But... That is not the case. Palo Alto is not just some consumer firewall. So this is deployed throughout the enterprise. They are not cheap. They are relatively expensive compared to some of the other consumer things out there. Just making that as a reference. And I think these people would know better. Or maybe because they paid a lot of money for it, they assumed leaving it exposed wouldn't be a big deal. But obviously, leaving a management interface exposed is quite the big deal as about the 11,000 firewalls were found to be exposed. And that rapidly turned into a giant dumpster fire of infected enterprise corporate firewalls, which is what led the people at Watchtower to go, this is interesting. What in the world went wrong? And the next part is, I'll admit, security is hard. Security is not easy. Code audits and all the things that we do still can miss things. But this one is obvious. And I don't mean obvious in a way because it's retro and after the fact because of exploitation. The developer writing it literally left those comments in this code. And that's what we're going to talk about first, that they knew that this was wrong. Now I want to jump right to the developer comments that they found in the Palo Alto firewall. These are horrible hacks. This whole code should be removed and only make available a few pages. So the person writing this took the time to say, this is a hacky solution to the problem. It should probably be fixed. And undoubtedly, this person didn't just leave this code in here. I don't know what goes on internally at Palo Alto, but we'll extrapolate a little bit and say, if you took the time to comment, you probably sent a message to a manager. And that manager was probably told, hey, can uh, I have more time to fix this in a more proper way? And that was denied. And so when you find comments like this that say this is a horrible hack, and I'll admit to completely putting these comments in some code I was writing until I handed it off to someone to fix it properly because I care about security. But obviously, this is not me writing for enterprise software. This is usually some bash script I'm writing. The fact that this is in there is negligence in my opinion. But let's go a little further and actually show what was so hacky about this that led to the exploitation. And I am jumping through a lot of details that I do recommend you read if you want to go through the reverse engineering process. But the too long didn't read is XPAN auth check off. As in just turning that off and sending that as a header. That's it. We'll let you bypass the interface. I mean, this is kind of crazy. As it says here, we simply supply the off value to the XPAN auth check HTTP request header. And the server hopefully turns off authentication. At this point, why is anyone surprised? And I get the smartestness from security researchers because it is obvious, but sometimes they're a little bit over the top. I get it because security researchers are really smart people. But in this case, this is particularly egregious, in my opinion, that the code was left in there with comments going, this is a hacky way to solve this problem. Someone 
figured out why it was a hacky way to solve the problem and bypasses this enterprise firewall. And you can feel free to read further about the other problem found, a privilege escalation in the SSL VPN. That's a whole nother write-up that's attached to this one because once you get in there, why not go ahead and uh, have more fun? Now back to the question I asked at the beginning of the video. Could this have been prevented? Clearly the developer knew that there was a problem with the implementation of this particular security feature and it wasn't done properly. But as I said, it seems that no resources were given to actually fixing it until it became under active exploitation and lots of companies getting pwned over this. Now, obviously the compounding factor is people leaving management interfaces exposed, which is mind numbing to me, but still the expectation is that the firewall should be secure. And my expectation is that people should follow general security practices on both sides. Now, I know Palo Alto only made about $8 billion in revenue in 2023, and they do have a lot of people they have to pay on payroll, but it feels like they could have squeezed a little bit out of their $150 million a year CEO pay package that the CEO gets to uh, fix this problem. But that's my opinion. What's yours? Leave your thoughts and comments down below. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. Head over to forums.lordsystems.com to have a more in-depth discussion about this and other topics. And uh, I'll see you online. Thanks. Thanks.